Hey everybody, Josh from Populi. Today, we're going to dig into the thorny issue of degree audits. Degree audits, what even are they? Well, I'm glad I asked. Degree audits exist so that advisors and administrators and a student can all get on the same page about what that student needs to do to progress towards graduation. Well, I'm glad I asked. Thank you, me. I'm welcome. But before we go any further, let's talk about roles. In order to manage anything here, you would need to have either the registrar or the academic admin role. Let's look at an example of a student profile so we can see what we're working towards. When we're looking at the degree audit, we're going to see at the top here, those general degree requirements. And then down below that, we'll see actual course groups with the courses listed and then their own specific requirements as well. So going back to those general degree requirements, you can see that we have these two check marks here, those green check marks that mean that these requirements have been met. So what's going on here is that we've got the cumulative GPA. You can see that that exceeds the requirement. This in gray here, we've got that requirement. And then we've got the overall GPA and that also exceeds that requirement. Below that, we've got our cumulative credits. So in this situation, the student needs a total of 128 credits to graduate and have their degree conferred, but they have only completed 45 credits. So they're still not quite there. And then we've got our resident credits and in-progress credits as well. And we'll get into those later in the video. So that's the general degree requirements. Let's go ahead and look at the more specific degree course requirements below. If we look down at the fine arts course group, we can see that there are four uh, courses required to be completed there. And this student has only earned two of those courses. So that is an unmet requirement. And then below that, you can see that that 2.0 GPA has been met as the student has a 3.75 GPA for those two courses that they have earned. And then below that, you can just see that we're noting that there's a minimum course grade point here of 2.0, and we'll talk about what that means later. If we look down at the specific courses here, we can see those listed, and then we can see the student's status in those courses, in progress in some, incomplete, or completed in others. This table defaults to show those completed um, options there, but then you can see that we can also look under the list of not completed courses, and then we can show all at once. So again, here's the point. Those details on the degree audit allow advisors, administrators, and the student to all see what the student needs to do, what they've already completed, and what they have yet to do to progress towards graduation. For instance, it's possible for a student to look at the top here and see that they've completed a bunch of courses, that they're nearing graduation, but then to go down to the bottom where we list the unused courses and show that they haven't necessarily completed courses that actually apply against any of their course degree requirements in those course groups. So they could be fulfilling all their general requirements, but not fulfilling their specific requirements at the course level. We want to know how to set this up so we can figure out where a student's at. So we're going to go look at a degree so we can see how this is set up. I'm going to academics, degrees, and then into new degree right here. You've already seen on a student's profile that divide between the general degree requirements and the more specific. Right here is where we're going to be setting those general degree requirements and then the more specific requirements at the course level come in through course groups over here. So that divide between general and specific is preserved and created here on the degree. The general degree requirements are easy to set up. There's potentially some change from year to year, but they're usually pretty static. The course group requirements get more complicated. They're managed by creating course groups, which are full of courses, and those course groups are then attached to the degree itself with the requirements. So you'll typically create multiple course groups for a single degree. Each course group contains all of the courses 
that could fulfill requirements for that portion of the degree. The requirements themselves are basically the number of credits or courses that a student would actually need to take in order to check off that particular course group. One way to think of this is that the courses in the course group are the denominator and then the requirements are the numerator. So if you have 12 courses to choose from and then you're requiring three of those courses, you're looking to complete three out of 12 courses. Of course, requirements change. If your school's been around for a little while, it's likely that on various degrees, you've had different requirements at different points. Both your general requirements and your course group requirements can be changed to keep up with those changes and even model them sort of as they've happened historically. However, this is also where things get well tricky, in it? And the basic thing to keep in mind here is that changes to requirements mean that you need a new requirement year. Changes to general requirements are really straightforward. As soon as you add a new requirement year, you're going to be invited to change that general requirement there. However, as you get into course group requirements, when you're going to be um, including or excluding a specific course as a requirement means that you're going to have to change both the requirement on the degree and then actually the course group itself will have to be edited. And we'll look at that in a little bit. Let's look at actually setting up the degree audits. Here's the overview. Create a requirement year on the degree. Doing that will prompt you to set the general degree requirements. Then you'll go in and create course groups that you're going to require, and then you'll actually set the requirements for each of those course groups on the degree itself. For the most part, degree audits get set up under academics, degrees, and then by clicking into the name of that existing degree, and then the next step is to add a requirement year. We're gonna go through these fields here and explain what they mean because they require some explanation. Let's set, first of all, a requirement year. These are based on the academic years that are set up under academics, settings, academic years. So they have to be present there to show up here. We're gonna choose one. Cumulative GPA, this means the GPA based on credits granted by your institution to the student. So if you set a two here, then a student would need to get a GPA for those credits of two or higher in order to pass that requirement. Overall GPA. You're probably asking, doesn't overall and cumulative mean essentially the same thing? Yes, they do. In this situation, overall means the cumulative GPA plus any transfer GPA combined. So if you have a different GPA requirement for your institution's credits than you have for your transfer credits, you can make that distinction here. Cumulative units. Now this instance of cumulative means exactly what you would think it is. It means that it's all of the institution's credits or hours combined with any transfer credits or hours. So this is the total number of credits or hours that a student must be granted in order to graduate. Residential units. Now this is the number of credits or hours that a student must be granted by the institution in order to graduate. That means that this number will typically be less than the overall credits. So if the total number of units needed to graduate are 120, but 90 of those units must be completed at the institution, you're going to set your cumulative units to 120 and your resident units to 90. Once we have those all filled out, we can save, and then that's the easy part done. Once we have a requirement year added with the general degree requirements, then we're able to add course groups. The course groups contain the courses from which students must choose in order to complete specific degree requirements. So we're gonna switch gears and leave this spot and go to academics, course groups, to create the necessary course groups to associate with that degree and set those requirements. Obviously to do this, you click add course group, then we're going to give it a name, then we'll select the year. The big guideline here when you're choosing a starting year as you're creating a course group is 
that you want to go back as far as you might need to provide a degree audit for. Let's say in this situation we're working with a school that started in 2009, so conceivably they might want to provide a degree audit for someone back at that point. The reason we want to start back at the beginning of when we might want to produce a degree audit for is that it makes it much easier as we're defining changes in this particular course group as we move forward in time. We'll define the first year for that degree audit and then we'll move to the next point that something changed and then, and then forward after that. So we want to start at the beginning and then work forward in time registering those changes here. So now when we're actually adding those initial courses to this course group, we're going to um, select the correct department and then we're gonna just choose a few courses here just to have some things present as an example. You can see as I choose here, we get the selected courses over on the right hand side. And once I've selected those, I'm gonna click save. Now we have a course group that contains those courses. We'll click into it. So as you can see here, we've defaulted to the current catalog year. And then this note here tells us that this course group definition has been carried forward from the 2009-2010 definition. So that's what I mean by setting up that initial catalog year and then moving forward. So as we move forward in time, we're going to register any changes that might have been made to this course group for that degree. So we'll assume that 2010, 2011, 2012, we didn't see any changes there, but then in 2013, we did see a change. We're gonna go over to Actions and click Edit Course Group, and we're going to remove a course that's no longer required and add a new one in that is required. So that was the change that was made. You could no longer receive credit for this course group for that other course. And now you're receiving credit for a new course on that course group. Now, if we move forward to 2014-15, we'll see that that carries forward that 2013-2014 definition. And then that will be the new set of courses that are being used for this requirement until we get to another year, let's say 2018, and then we'll do the same thing, make a couple changes on that. We're gonna, we're gonna move that course out of the course group and then save, and now this becomes the new edit point, and so on until you get to the current year. Okay, so that's the process for creating the course groups. You're gonna do that for any course groups that you're going to use to define your requirements for the degree. So the next step is to actually attach this course group to the degree and then add requirements. To do that, we're gonna to go to Academics, Degrees, and then back to that degree that we were working on. Once we get here, we wanna make sure that we have the correct requirement year set. We do wanna set the 2009-2010 requirement year, that's the one we've added, but if you have another requirement year and you're going to add different course groups in, you just wanna make sure that you've checked that. So check requirement year, and then down here under course groups, we're gonna click add. We're going to choose that new degree course group and then we'll go through each of these fields here. For requirement type, your choices are units or courses. Units will be either credits or hours, depending on how your program for this degree is set up. Courses will just mean that you're setting a number of courses. So requirement value corresponds to this. So if I want you know, to say that we need 12 credits from this course group, I would set it to units and then enter 12. Or if you're gonna do, say, three courses for that course group, you would set courses here and then the requirement value to three. GPA required, this means that all courses that are completed within this course group need to have this minimum GPA. We're gonna set the GPA for 2.5 here. What that means is that all courses that the student receives credit for need to average out to a GPA of at least 2.5. For minimum course grade, that's slightly different. This means that no courses 
that fall below what we set here and we'll set a two could be um, applied to this course group at all. So if a student gets a grade point of 1.9 in a course, it won't be able to be applied against this course group at all. And then for the allow equivalencies and restrict courses, just for the sake of time, we won't get into that. So with that set up, we now have the ability to have a match between a student's catalog year, between the requirement year here on the degree itself, and then also on the course group, that catalog year. So in order for this to work for a student, we need to have all three of those things matching up. So if you go to a student's profile and look at their degree audit and you see something like this, or you see courses that aren't showing up that you would expect to, you wanna make sure that you've got that match between the student's catalog year, the course group's catalog year, and then the requirement year on the degree all set up properly so that Populi knows to look at that catalog year across the board and show what it should here on the degree audit. With all that in place, the catalog year on the student controls the catalog year definition on the course group so that the degree audit pulls in the correct courses for this student. All you have to do is set up the rest of your course groups, set the requirement years on the degree, set the catalog years for any changes over time on the course groups, and then that's most of the work. Once you're done with that, if you have specializations for the degree, those would be set up pretty much the same way. You're going to be able to define course groups so that you'll be able to see requirements so that they show up properly on the degree audit. Let's firm up the process here. You're going to create your first requirement year. Doing that will prompt you to create um, the general requirements for the degree. Then you can create your course groups. And then once you have those all set up, you're able to go to the degree and set the requirements for each of those groups. That's a lot of information. We know that. Feel free to review the video or go check out more details by following the links to the knowledge base articles in the description below. I'm Josh for Populi. Thanks a lot for watching. Feel free to click subscribe if you haven't already. And then when you hit subscribe, you'll get that little notifications bell. You can click that ding, ding, ding to get notifications whenever we post a new video. And we like you. Why don't you show us how much you like us? Click like on this video. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.